Last year, I talked about the uphill struggle that AMD was going to face in 2017. For the 10 years leading up to it, the processors were not that good. But that all changed this year with AMD's Zen architecture. Get ready for a very positive video, because Ryzen managed to be even better than it was hyped up to be. I couldn't have been alone in growing tired of Intel's same old 4 core i5s and i7s every year. The same old 5% improvement per generation, accompanied by what seemed like a 5% price hike. As a 3770K owner, this should have made me happy, but instead it quickly got dull to see progress grind to a halt. But then Ryzen happened. It doesn't suit my style to be this positive about something, but Ryzen is the product to deserve my praise. It didn't just bring AMD back from an impossible disadvantage. It halved prices for every given performance level. Its success surprised even Intel, who despite having years to prepare, was sent into a state of shock, resulting in rushed and confused product launches to combat the AMD threat. I have a hard time stating how essential Ryzen was. We're talking more cores, hyperthreading, lower power consumption, a scalable multi-die design, smaller fabrication process and higher performance, all of which Ryzen nailed first time. No lie, every time I'm on a train I load up a review of Ryzen just to smile at the benchmarks. It's so good to see AMD back in the CPU race. While Intel focuses on larger, expensive processors, Zen is a small, cheap one that can be glued together for more performance. This reduces waste and prices, and can scale to any price point, from budget computers up to high-end servers. While Intel have been charging a huge premium for 8-core processors for years, Ryzen 7 can offer a similar product for a mainstream price. The Ryzen 5s were even more competitive. I was impressed enough with a 1500X, which was like a slightly slower i7 for half the price. It's testament to how strong the lineup is that this CPU has been overlooked in favour of the 1600 series. 12 threads for i5 prices. That's the deal of the year right there. It was only the Ryzen 3s that disappointed me, but it took Intel's legendarily affordable Pentium G4560 to manage it. But even then, it's a no-brainer that a full-fat 4-core processor will age better. Plus, its single-core performance is still good enough. Good enough. That's an unofficial slogan I've given to Ryzen. It doesn't sound that great, but I don't mean it in a nasty way. I mean that it's good enough. Gone are the days of Bulldozer, where the benefit of more cores was cancelled out by dire single-core performance. Intel's single-core performance is still better, no denying it, but Ryzen's single-core performance is still good enough. You'll get higher FPS in CSGO from an i5, but Ryzen's FPS is still good enough. On its own, being good enough wouldn't be good enough. If given the choice between a 4-core Ryzen or 4-core Intel, the Intel is a better choice, because it is faster. But they shouldn't be compared, since Ryzen offers more cores at any given price point. So while it's good enough now, it'll be a better bet tomorrow. Ryzen's success is at least partly down to Intel's delayed response. At the time they had the 6000 series, which if dropped the right prices could have directly gone against the Ryzen series. But Intel played it cool, keeping prices high, which itself was a blessing for AMD, whose product lineup began to gain market share. Maybe Intel wants to retain the reputation for having a premium product, I thought, to make owners of the 6000 series CPUs feel better about their investment. But surely the high-core Skylake CPUs, released as part of the 7000 series, would wipe the floor with AMD. No. Instead, the lineup was a complete mess, with confused features, high power consumption and poor thermals. Sure, there were good products to be found, but Ryzen still offered more for your money. It's only been with the recently released 8000 series that Intel have offered a Ryzen killer. A combination of higher core counts and lower priced variants make it a direct threat to Ryzen. The 6-core 8700K reclaims the performance crown from Ryzen 7 in all but the most multi-threaded of workloads, and sports fantastic single-core performance to boot. Despite this, Ryzen has continued to do well, in part thanks to Intel's limited availability and expensive motherboards. But regardless, Ryzen cannot directly compete with it in terms of performance nor was it designed to. Instead, we've seen large price cuts to the Ryzen lineup to tide consumers over until it's refresh early next year. That's right, early next year we'll be seeing a Zen 1.5 released. There's not a lot of information about it right now, but I think it's fair to assume that we'll be getting general performance improvements, considering the optimizations that an extra year of development can bring about. The Ryzen architecture is only in its first iteration after all. There are probably plenty of opportunities to squeeze some extra performance out of it. I don't expect more cores, and frankly, don't think it needs them. Rather, improved single-core performance is more likely to be the focus. This is where Intel is ahead, and thanks to their refined processes, they can reach up to 5GHz, while Ryzen is limited to closer to 4. 
If they can up this to a higher figure, introduce support for faster RAM and add those magical optimizations, then I'll be happy. There will also be a jump from 14 to 12 nanometers. Smaller stuff has always driven advancements in computer technology, allowing them to fit more stuff into things, as well as lowering power consumption and heat production. Ryzen wasn't bad for any of these things in the first place, but these kind of improvements are always welcome, especially in laptops. For years, AMD have missed a trick with their mobile stuff. I'm sure that many of you see value in having a second, portable gaming system, but are put off by the price premium that goes along with it. And as the only company to make decent processors and graphics cards, it makes sense that AMD combine the two to provide us with affordable budget gaming laptops. The existing Ryzen 2500 and 2700U could make this a reality, but unfortunately so far have only been put in expensive systems that are priced similarly to laptops with more powerful, dedicated graphics cards, of which it can't and isn't intended to compete with. Shame. I really hope to see some good mobile products from AMD in 2018. But that's for next year. For 2017 at least, AMD have been highly competitive. I haven't even mentioned Threadripper, AMD's secret weapon which strapped two Ryzen 7s together to offer 16 cores and 32 threads of performance. And then Epic is like two Threadrippers joined together. Where does it end? Honestly, I don't know what I'd do with all that power. It's good to know it's possible for when games and applications I use begin utilising it. But right now, for the average user, I think they'd favour faster cores than to have even more of them. So, Ryzen, better than we could have hoped for. But AMD can't stop there. They have a viable product for years to come, but it would be a shame to let Intel eat away that advantage and to do nothing about it. Intel's counter so far has been underwhelming, almost as though they didn't have secret tech waiting in the wings for AMD's eventual comeback. But 2018 looks to be the year of the coffee lake. But I sure hope that Ryzen's refresh is up to the challenge. At least until Ryzen 2 arrives. Not bad for an underdog.